Hi, I'm PackRat556. I wanted to have a little discussion with you today to discuss the topic of magnetic declination and how that value affects the bearings that you'll take with your compass in the field. Uh, first of all, I want to start out with a little bit of a technical explanation of what declination actually is, and then I'm going to finish up the video with uh, a fairly simple explanation and exactly what you need to know in order to take uh, the proper bearings when in the field. First of all, to understand declination, you must first understand that there are two North Poles. There's a true geographic North Pole at the top of the Earth, and then there is a magnetic North Pole. I did an elementary drawing here just to display this for you. If this round circle represents the Earth, then this would represent the North Pole, and the true south poles okay now there's a magnetic field that surrounds the earth and that magnetic field doesn't perfectly line up with the true north and south poles on the earth so i put this here to show you what that looks like so the actual uh, magnetic north pole is about 500 miles currently it's, it, while it's always shifting it's currently about 500 miles off from the actual north pole if you're tr if you're trying to travel let's say you're just to keep it simple, you're traveling straight north and your compass is bearing off in this direction, you can tell where that's going to give you some discrepancies there. All right, uh, The magnetic pole, as I said, is currently about 500 miles from the true north pole. However, it's constantly moving because of the molten core of the earth. And that molten metallic core, when it's shifting, uh, so does the magnetic field that surrounds the earth. It's generally said that a compass points to the magnetic North Pole and not the true North Pole, but that's actually not true. Technically, the compass actually points in the direction of the horizontal component of the magnetic field in its location. The difference between true North and this horizontal component of the magnetic field expressed in degrees is what declination is. That's kind of a mouthful, but that's a technical uh, explanation of true de uh, declination. Now what I want to do with the rest of the video is show you uh, what this means for you and how you can take accurate readings in the field so that you will be more successful in your travels. First of all when you're using your map style compass to take bearings from a map you're probably going to be using some type of a topographic map and in the bottom left hand corner of that map you should find a scale that looks something like this. Now, this scale actually shows you three separate norths. There's something called grid north, which I'm not going to talk about a whole lot because I don't want to make this video really more confusing than it, than it already might be. This star represents the actual true north direction, and then this one shows magnetic north. And this is the one that we'll want to use to figure our declination. Right here, you'll see a number, and that really will tell you the declination for the area of your map or the area you're, you're traveling in. So that'll give you your declination number. Now, um, I'll tell you another way a little bit later in the video to find declination in case you don't have this available to you. But generally, that's what you're going to find on your topographic map, and that's what you would use for your declination value. Once you have your declination value, it's going to be a number either expressed in an easterly declination or a westerly declination. Um, one or the other, it's always going to be easterly or westerly. Um, there's actually a little saying that you can easily remember to help you know exactly what you're supposed to do with your declination value. The saying goes like this, declination east, compass least. In other words, you'll subtract the declination value from your compass bearing. The second half is declination west, compass best. And that means that you should add the declination value to your compass bearing. This will be an easy way for your, you to remember and know exactly how to handle that declination value. Okay, to help you understand this principle, I've drawn a very elementary basic map. And I've kept this simple on purpose just for illustration purposes. Okay, now, what this map shows is point A as my current location and point B as my desired destination. And you can see I've drawn a line just showing that path of travel. What I would do is put my compass on my map, draw the line, and that way I know where it is that I want to go. Okay, now, uh, when I first put my compass on my map showing my path of travel, I then need to orient my dial to the cardinal points on the map. On a true topographic map, you're going to have these real light grid lines that you can use to help you orient this um, with the map. Okay, now I've got my, my compass pretty much oriented. Now what I've got to do to actually find out where that direction is, is adjust my whole compass and map together so that north, the red north lines up 
in the doghouse, so to speak, so that they line up properly. And now this shows where 90 degrees east is. Okay, now I, I know because of this map that I've got a 10 degree, let me slide this up so you can see it better. This is the declination scale, and it tells me that there's a 10 degree easterly declination. Okay, this is that thing that we talked about just a minute ago. So now if I go off traveling in this direction, I'm going to be either uh, 10 degrees off minus or 10 degrees off plus. So uh, now let's take into consideration that declination, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now that we know from looking at our map that we want to travel 90 degrees east and that we have a 10 degree declination easterly, let's look at what that is on paper. Very, very simple. Okay, we want to travel 90 degrees to the east. All right, and we know that we have a 10 degree easterly declination. I'm going to abbreviate if you guys will let me. Okay, so we, we had our on our little rhyme while I go, it was declination east, compass least. That tells us subtract. So when we use our compass, we actually want to travel in a direction of 80 degrees east. And that way we'll actually line up, on our, our path of travel will actually line up with the true destination and not be 10 degrees off. Now, when this really makes a difference is if you travel over a long distance, that 10 degrees is going to become larger and larger the further you travel. So we definitely want to take in consideration that 10 degree easterly declination. Let's quickly look at one more example. Let's say on this map, the declination scale, instead of being 10 degrees east, had it been 10 degrees west. Okay, let's write that down. We want to travel in a path that's 90 degrees to the east. Okay, our path of travel haven't changed. That... That remains constant on the map, okay? But the only thing we're changing is that this is a 10 degree westerly declination. Remember our rhyme that we said before, if declination is west, compass best, which means to add. So we have our 10 degree westerly declination. All right, compass best, we're gonna add the two together and that's gonna give us 100 degrees traveling in an easterly direction. All right, so now you can see how this works. It's just simple subtraction or addition. Just remember the rhyme, declination east, compass least, declination west, compass best. Okay guys, now that we've talked about a couple of examples to give you an idea how to handle your declination value, I wanted to share with you one other thing. This is actually a picture from uh, the manual of the Silver Ranger compass, which I did a review on recently. If you haven't seen that and you're interested, uh, take a look at it. But uh, this is actually a chart to show declination values of North America. And you might not be able to see it clear enough to, uh, to actually you know, get the value for your area if you are in North America. But this is available online. If you purchase Compass, you should get something like this with it. And there's actually another really cool thing that I wanted to tell you guys about. Is there's a website, actually, that, um, that if you go to this website and type in your zip code... Uh, you can it'll actually pull up for you your current um, accurate declination for your area. I'm going to show you the website here. You probably won't be able to see it all that great. That's it right there. And what I'll do is I'll post this in the sidebar for you guys so that way you can go and visit on your own and get the declination for your area or for any area that you might be traveling in and that way you'll have that information handy just in case you don't have a current topographic map. So uh, I'll post that in the sidebar. Hope this has been helpful for you guys. I'm sure some of you experts out there probably could explain this better than me. But um, I didn't see a whole lot of videos on this topic, so I wanted to put something out there for those who were interested. Um, declination can be a really kind of complicated subject if you really dig into all the details of it and how it works and so forth. Main thing, if you remember what we talked about, uh, declination east, compass least, de uh, declination west, compass best. That's really all you need to know. And uh, if you do that, your, your bearing is going to be much more accurate, especially if you're in an area where uh, declination is a larger number. And especially if you're traveling over longer, longer distances. The longer you travel, and if you don't figure a declination, the further off base you'll be when you actually get uh, to where you're trying to travel. So anyway, just something to think about, something to study on. And uh, we're always trying to improve our skills, so this hopefully will help your knowledge a little bit more of using a compass and map. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks again for your support and for watching the video. And uh, let me know what you think. Take care, guys.